Welcome to the NAPSIC Foundation Shelter Sandbox Overview video. In this video, we'll show the high-level pieces of the Shelter Sandbox, how you can edit and change shelter information, how that information can be viewed in dashboards and public information maps that are auto-populated, and some other tips and tricks to get the most out of this tool. When you first land on the NAPSIC Foundation Shelter Sandbox, you'll be directed to the home page. The home page will provide a quick glance of what's new since you last visited, some high-level information regarding the inventory for base data and active incident data used during sheltering, a QR code which is great to share with other folks who might want to use it, the point of contact if you have some recommendations or issues with this tool, a technical user guide for GIS and IT which provides good metadata regarding the layers that are part of this tool, and a training video playlist which includes this high-level overview video and an advanced user video. Across the top, you will find all the other applications that are part of the Shelter Sandbox. Let's go ahead and start with Edit Shelters. Editing shelters is where you will change the status, occupancy, and other information related to shelters. When you first land on this Edit Shelters tab, the About piece will be brought up. If you forget anything about the widgets that we'll talk about today, you could go in and look at all the additional applications and widgets that are part of this. Some high-level navigation pieces, you could use the ad address or navigation bar on the top left. If you go ahead and type in something like, say, a sheriff's office, it will bring you to that location. You could zoom in and out from this location with the minus and plus buttons, with your mouse wheel, or by holding control holding shift, and zooming in and drawing a box. If you press the home button, it will bring you back to the default extent. If you want to go back to zoomed in, the left and right arrows will show you the previous extents. This is some very easy navigation tips using this tool. So let's go ahead and look at the map and see what is actually active as far as shelters. So we have some test shelters in here. Remember, this is a test application. Um, you could tell that there's some open shelters and some standby shelters. You could tell that because on the top there's a legend. Here's the different types of shelters you can have. You could choose a different base map, which allows you to do some basic analysis if you want to look at terrain or a community map to show you nearby areas like parks. You could turn layers on or off. Um, this is good if you have a lot of data that's overlapping. You could filter the map, so you could see just by a certain county. You could do by the last time it's updated, or you could do by the status, so open, close, or standby. There's also a custom expression down here for filters. Uh, we won't go into that today, but that is also available. To test sharing, you could go into the share button, which allows you to share this to other partners that would have access to editing shelters. There's advanced link options that we could cover in a future advanced video, but for today, you could just use this link to share it. Again, we talked about the about shelter information. This will go over all of the tabs I just covered. And finally, there is an add data. This is more an advanced user function that allows you to add additional information from the map. You could add this from the map, your organization, ArcGIS Online, and a lot of different other places. So back to the core function of this application is really the editing shelters. You can use the smart editor to add in a new shelter. And here's your options down here for both shelters and supply caches. Let's just go ahead and click on the one that's already open out here in Colorado. You will see that all of these fields can be populated with some dropdowns or free text. Certain fields will come up on the public information map and those are identified in the GIS and IT uh, technical guide. You can go in here and you can change any of the information. Uh, this has been vetted with local jurisdictions as far as what fields are necessary for sheltering, but obviously if you have unique fields, you can add that when you deploy it on your own organization. So we're gonna go ahead and say that this shelter is open. And by opening that shelter, it automatically feeds the dashboard. So let's go ahead and click on the dashboard. The dashboard gives you a high level overview of what shelters are open and their response and preparedness indicators to help you make better decisions about overall mass care and sheltering needs. You can now see that this shelter is open, but this is view only. 
Unlike the Edit Shelters tab, you can only view information on this. There are some filters up top that allow you to choose either a single or multiple counties based on where the shelters open. And you could also filter shelters by open, standby, or all. So right now we're showing all, but if you only want to see standby ones, it will filter it out. The corresponding widgets here on the left side will reflect what's shown on the map. If you had a supply cache open, there would also be custom filters up here as well. If you're in a large event with lots of updated shelters, this recently updated shelter list is really good to see what was recently updated and why. You could expand out any of these widgets by clicking the expand button and then expand them back down. Again, this is a good way to get an overall view of what sheltering looks like in your jurisdiction. When we go to the public information piece, again, just like the dashboard, this is view only. However, the information that is shown to the public is pared down version of the overall shelter information. We want the public to know where the shelter is, a phone number, a website for more information, and a public message. They don't necessarily need to know what mass care or EOC leads know about the shelter. They could get directions, or they could filter on here as well. If they're only looking for a warming center, they could do that custom filter. However, if they want an overnight or long-term shelter and they click that, you'll see that none are open. This is another way to provide the public with an opportunity to find the shelter that's right for them. Finally, the best part of this tool is to find a shelter near me. You could put in an address and then find a shelter near you based on a buffer. You could change the buffer amount right here uh, and this allows the public to decide how far they want to drive or if there is an open shelter. Finally, the new shelter tab is just a duplication of the smart editor function, but configured for mobile view. When you're working on your phone, it's a lot easier to go through a survey based shelter information compared to the smart editor. So when you pull this up, you'll be able to add in a shelter name, add in the base data, which is data that will not change. And then once you get down to the active data, be able to change all the active incident information regarding the status of the shelter, event ID, and so on. That's it for this high level overview video. We appreciate you using the NAPSIC Foundation Shelter Sandbox. And as always, if you have any recommendations or questions, please contact us at admin at publicsafetygis.org.